Okay, so for this excitement, we're going to be using um, wax resist and watercolor as we're doing our lettering. So it's gonna be important that you have a sketch out of what word you want to do this with. I always like to have a ruler handy so that way I can double check that my um, the base of my letters and the top of my letters are around the same height. Um, you don't want a letter that kind of starts large and then shrinks um, as you spell out the word. Um, and I'd like to do it lightly with a nice sharp pencil. I'm gonna go over the letters with a white crayon, making sure not to hit the uh, pencil lines because I'm gonna erase those afterwards. And if you use a crayon over the lines, it stays permanent. So I'm just going to fill out the inside of my word and I'm just writing hello. If you hold your head at a bit of an angle, you can see the um, reflection from the white crayon because you're gonna be drawing white on white and it can be kind of hard to see where you're applying your, um, where the crayon is actually showing up. So I tilt my head to the side so that way I can really see where my letters actually are with the white crayon. Okay, now we're gonna use our watercolor. So you have to have a little tray or a little cup of water, just clean water, your brush that comes in your packet. And then this is new, this is our watercolor um, it's liquid watercolor. You have a red, a magenta, one or two um, wells of yellow. I figured one could kind of be mixed into like a green. Um, you have blue and you have turquoise. Each of these colors are going to be kind of, um, that they can be mixed together to create something kind of fun. Um, I personally want it to be like a primary color scheme. So I'm gonna start with a magenta go into yellow, and then go into like a turquoise and see how that kind of um, looks. So when you're using watercolor, you wanna make sure that your brush is wet. Um, I'm gonna just take a little bit of this magenta and I'm gonna start here and just go over. And you can see how my lettering, the wax is resisting the paint. So you can read the hello, even though the marks are kind of gone. And I'm gonna go over, since I have three colors, I want this center color to be like a strong yellow. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush, go back into my yellow and make sure that this L is completely one color before I start mixing. And I'm gonna mix with the H and I'm gonna mix with the, the second L. So you can see how this kind of becomes like orange. And then I'm gonna go with turquoise, rinse out my brush, start from the back. and work my way over to the center. Rinse out my brush, and then I'm gonna to return to that yellow and blend it so that way I have like a strong green. Really rinse out your brush. And if it's too much, I can always kind of Push from the center back in. And then go over it with that yellow. And if you find that you are using too much water, you can use a paper towel to kind of blot the surface a bit. And that'll pick up a lot of the color that you feel like is too much. It can also leave um, fun texture, which you might enjoy. 
So you should be able to read your word in Wax Resist. Let this dry and then you, you can go back and you still see the pencil lines. You're gonna go over that with an additional color. So if you wanted to use like, I think I'm gonna probably use the dark, um, the dark blue to kind of go over the edge, you can. So let's try with this dark blue. Make sure it's an area that's dry because if it's wet, it's gonna feather and bleed. Um, so if you do have something that is um, a specific color, it's gonna bleed into the next color. But I'll show you, you're gonna fill in Fill in those letters. And you don't have to worry about kind of going over because the wax resists the paint. And it's up to me if I wanted to mix and have it be like just a darker version of each of these. So if I wanted, um, I could do the whole thing in that navy color, or if I go back and have like a solid red. Against the pink. You can do that too. Pay attention to the corners. So use the tip of your brush to make nice clean corners. Don't just be rushing through the assignment. Actually pay attention to how much pressure you're putting on the brush. So that way you have nice crisp straight edges. So when, if we wanted to do some color mixing, like I want to do a, a solid orange for this E, I'm going to start in the center. Um, you can even use some of these empty wells to create a custom color. So I'm going to start by um, adding in some just yellow into an empty well. Rinse out my brush. And then add this red to it and mix it really well so that way I have a bright color. If I feel like that's too, too much red, you know, if it looks like red orange, I can add more yellow to it. Just be sure to rinse before you apply. So that looks like a nice strong orange. Check to make sure that nothing's wet. And I can still see my little pencil mark, so I'm gonna fill that in with my darker color here. Now with this one, because it has a lot of green underneath it, I wanna be really careful that I'm constantly using a fresh, fresh color so that it doesn't contaminate.
All right, and then if I wanted to make the green, start out with a little bit of water. I always go with the lighter colors first. So here's my yellow. And then add just a little bit of blue. See how that really changes into, into a green color. If I want it to be more vibrant, I'm gonna add some more yellow to that. I kind of hold my brush against the well, so I'm dripping it in, and then I mix it around. I like that. Okay. So this is just uh, an example of how you can use your crayon to create a waxed resist and how you can use your watercolor set to, um, to make a cool lettering.